Okay, so what I want to do, sorry about today, obviously I had to stay home today, but I wanted to show you Ultimate Guitar and kind of how Ultimate Guitar works um, to make sure that you all understand this. I'm sure most of you have looked at this all right, but or already, but anyway, I want to show you this. So needless to say, the, the website is ultimate-guitar.com. Okay, so when you when you go there, you're going to see this thing here. Okay, um, I actually pay, a, I think it's a monthly fee or something, so I don't have to have so many pop-ups and things on here. Um, so if you use it a lot, I would definitely recommend doing that. Anyway, what's going to happen here is when you come over to this page, you're going to see this little thing here. It says tabs, bands, all this different stuff here. We just want the tabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the name of an artist. So let's say I type in the name... Um, Let's do, well, just for fun of it, since I know you love this song so much, we're going to do Sweet Home Alabama. I'm just kidding. I, maybe you do like it, maybe you don't, I don't know. But anyway, so Sweet Home Alabama. So when I type that in, you're going to see I get tons and tons and tons of different things about Sweet Home Alabama here. What I want to do is I want to find the one with the artist I'm looking for, and of course, in this case, it would be Leonard Skinner. And the rest of these are just different ones or whatever. So this is what I'm looking for. So when I get to this page right here, what I want to do is I want to look for the one that says Sweet Home Alabama, and then I want to look over here to the right and find the one with the most stars. Okay, so for instance, this one says Sweet Home Alabama intro. Well, first of all, I'm not just learning the intro. I want to learn the song, but if I was just looking for the intro, this would be great, except it only has three stars. Now remember, what you're looking for is the one that has the most stars and the most ratings. Now, you'll notice here, this is the only one that says Sweet Home Alabama intro. So if I was looking for just that, I don't have any other choices, so I would probably pick that one. Um, but as we'll see in a little bit here, most of these other ones have the intro in there as well. So anyway, the next thing we want to look at is the type over here. You'll see it says tab. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to teach you guys about tablature today. So if we look down here, I'll, again, I know some of you are further along, but Basically, what we're looking for at this point are the ones that are chords, because, of course, we've been learning how to play chords. So what I would do is I would go down here to Sweet Home Alabama. I would find the one with the most votes and the most rating. You can see this one right here is the one I'm looking for. And then it says chords right there. So if I click on this one, there it is. Okay, so we see the song right here. It says D, C, and G. Now, what's nice about this website, for the most part, is when you put your mouse over the top of one of the chords, you're going to see a chord pop up. You don't have to click on it. You just put your your little cursor over the top, and the chords pop up. Now, if the chord pops up and it's a different shape than you know, again, as we've talked about before, you either have one of two choices. You can either learn the shape that they're trying to show you, or you can just do the one that you already know. Just because this sheet music is on this website, please remember that does not mean that it is correct. It just means it's somebody's... Um, you know, interpretation of how the song should go. So you can always ask me if you're confused about that or anything. But, you know, when I taught this to you, I taught it to you as D, C, and G anyway. So obviously this is exactly what we're doing. So when you look at it, you're going to notice that there isn't bar measures and things like that or measure lines so that are measures. <laughs> I'm having a hard time talking here. You know, there isn't any measures. You're just looking at th this thing, and it shows you kind of in a guesstimation about where the chord changes would be occurring relative to the word that's being said. You have to use some sense of, you know, your ears to listen to a song and kind of figure out where everything should be. Um, but that's the way these things will be set up. Now, if this, you were going to, let's say you were going to sing this song. You really liked it a lot, and you wanted to sing it, but it was too low for you. What you can do is come up here to this little button that says Transpose, and you can transpose it up a certain amount of steps to make it easier for you to play or easier for you to sing. Now, needless to say, when you shift the key, you will no longer be in the key of that the song is actually in. Therefore, when you try and play along with the song, um, it won't work. So this would be something that you'd want to do um, if you were going to sing it or something by yourself. So anyway, you can go down, you can go up. So for instance, watch this. If I go up two half steps right here and hit transpose, now, all of a sudden, I have E, D, and A. So if that was easier for you to sing in or, or something like that, you certainly could do that. I'm going to go back here, though. So down two half steps. There's our original key. So the only reason you'd be transposing things at this point is if you were going to play it by yourself and you wanted to um, try it in a different key to make it easier for you to sing with. OK? 
okay? Then if you go over to this button over here, it says print. Click on that, you're gonna get a full page like this. And this is an easier way of printing the song. See, it has the diagrams down at the bottom and that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. So you don't have to print off all this other stuff, you know, the big ultimate guitar thing and all that. You can just go to the print button and it makes it nice and easy for you to see. Now let's move on from there. And I'm gonna come back over here. And this time what we're gonna do, you'll see there's, there's tab, there's chords, there's bass for bass guitar. There's Guitar Pro, there's Power Tab, and then there's Drums, and then there's Video Lessons. So you can use the Video Lessons, obviously, as well, to learn songs if they've got them available. Again, hoping that they're the correct, which is great. Give that a try. Okay. Power Tab and Guitar Pro are a little bit different because those are spe specified software that you need to own um, to be able to look at these, these um, sheets. Okay. Uh, Power Tab is a free program. If you do a Google search for Power Tab uh, program, you'll find it and you can install it. If you do that, the Power Tab would look like. Let's hope this works. Like that. Let me make that smaller so you can kind of see it here. There you go. So the Power Tab would look like this. Okay. So it's pretty cool. It's far more accurate, and you'll see here all these numbers. That's what we're going to be talking about is that tablature. That's what I'm going to explain to you in just a minute here. Okay, so that's what you can do with PowerTab. Guitar Pro Tab, let me go back again here. Guitar Pro Tab, Guitar Pro is a program. Again, you can do a search for that and read about it, but Guitar Pro is a much more involved program. Um, it costs, I think, like $60. I, I own a copy here, and I also own it at Elevate. Um, just because I find it really useful for the things that um, I'm teaching. But the big thing with Guitar Pro, wait for this to open for you, there we go, is that in Guitar Pro, let me move that over so you can see it, down here in this area you'll see it says Guitar 1, Guitar 2, Guitar 3. You can pull up the different guitar parts, and they're all broken into different pieces there. Uh, bass, piano, all this kind of thing. So that's what's really neat about Guitar Pro. Now, moving on here, we're going to come back over here to the tab. Okay, so what I'm going to do is try and find a tab that has the most ratings with the most stars. And if I don't like it, I can always look at something else. So needless to say, like this Sweet Home Alabama has 481 ratings at 4 stars. That's pretty good. This one has 13 at 5. You know, who knows? I, I'm going to give this one a try anyway, this, this one right here, this version 6. Now, let me... Let's show you this a little bit here. Now here, what we're going to be doing, zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Okay, right here shows the intro to the song. Okay? So what you're looking at here, when you look at these lines, you're looking at your physical six strings. This is the first string or the thin string. This is the second string, third string, excuse me, fourth string, fifth string, and sixth string. So what you're really doing is you're looking at your guitar upside down. You're looking at your guitar, if you were holding your guitar in your lap and you literally flipped it over so your thick string was facing the floor and the first string, or excuse me, the, the sixth string was toward the floor and the first string was toward the ceiling and you were staring at the front of your guitar, you'd be looking at tablature. Okay? So what this is trying to show you is the fret that you're going to be playing on each one of the strings. So, for instance, in this case right here, this first part here, we'd be on the fourth string, and we would pluck that string open two times. That's what the zero, zero is for, okay? So you take your guitar pick, you go to the fourth string, and you pluck that fourth string open twice. Now, the two zeros there, they're not actually O's for open, although you can think of it like that, but they're actually zeros for zero fret or no fret. Okay, that's why you're plucking it open. Then what you'd need to do is head right up to the third fret of the second string. And you'd have to press on the third fret of the second string and pluck that note. Okay? Then you'd go to the third string and you'd go to the second fret of that string and you'd pluck that note. See, all these are individual notes. You're not strumming anything in this case. You're just, you're just playing them all individually. And then here we'd play the zero, which is the open string of the third fret, or excuse me, the third string. So here you got that dun dun da dun dun, and that would be the end of it. Then we would keep going. 
Now, everybody, what's confusing about tablature is when you look at it, it's a bunch of numbers that aren't really connected to anything. So what I want you to start learning to do is to visualize. If you were to take a piece, this is what I do, is I take phrases. Like if I just took this piece right here. If I take a phrase and I try and visualize it and think about what chord shape I'm actually making right there. And of course, we don't know all the chords yet, so some of this is going to be kind of hard. And that's why I'm your teacher, so I can help you with these things. Okay, right here, what you're actually doing in this first one, two, three, four, five notes is you're making a D chord. So if you took and actually just made a D chord right now, you'd notice that your fourth string would be open. That's the one you're strumming without fretting. Your first string would have a second fret, although we can see right here, we don't even use the first string for the beginning of this song. So we don't need that. It, it can stay there. That's fine. We're just not going to be plucking it. Then you've got a third fret on the second string and a second fret on the third string there. So this beginning is actually a D chord. So the easiest way to approach tablature is sometimes if you can visualize the kind of chord shape that you're making out of each part. Now you and I already talked about how the song goes D, C, and G. Now some of you know how to play the C add 9 chord, which is actually what's happening in the next section starting right here. And then moving on into this part down in here. This whole section here would be the C add 9. Okay, so here we'd have our middle finger on the third fret of the fifth string. We'd have our third finger on the third fret of the second string. So you'd just really be using those two strings. So like in this first chord here, when you make D, your third finger is already on this third fret right here. So when you move on to this chord, your third finger still stays in that one, that one fret. See how it stays there? The only thing that you're doing is you're flipping that D chord over and you're putting your middle finger on the third fret of the fifth string. Okay? So that's how that part's going to go right there. Now, again, I'm just trying to kind of summarize this as best I can. You don't have to learn how to play the beginning of Sweet Home Alabama, and we certainly can look at this uh, anytime you like. Let's take another easy song like, um, this is an old one. It's called Who Will Save Your Soul? by Jewel. I don't know if anybody knows this song, but we're going to take a look at it. So our options here, we have uh, tab, which is only three stars. That's not good. Chords, four stars. That's okay. And then that's all we have. So not much here. So we're going to look at this one with the three stars and see how horrible it is. So moving into here. That's not too bad. Okay. So you'll see here, they've already written out the chords for you. A minor, C, G, D. And those are the chords to the song. So underneath there, you'll see that some of this tablature is going to correlate with the chord. So the first thing you do is you make that A minor chord. Okay, then you look here. Okay, on the fifth string, do I play a zero on an A minor? Obviously, I do in this song, but is there a zero on the fifth string of the A minor chord? And there is. Is there a two? Oh, yeah, it is kind of wrong. Now that I'm looking at it, these two notes should actually be on this string. So, anyway, yeah, it's not, not a good tablature. But anyway, and this is, again, where, you know, the, the flaws of whoever wrote it and whatever, you know, we can't get mad at them. They're just trying to do the, ba the best they can for us, but you can always ask me about it. So this one, what we'd have is zero on the fifth string, and then it shows third string, second fret, which you do have a finger on, fourth string, second fret, which you do have a finger on, but these two guys are not right. These two guys should be sitting up here on the second string. So on an A minor chord, if you think about it, on the second string, you'd normally have your first finger sitting right there. Well, what you're going to do is take that first finger off the guitar and pluck a zero. Because remember, this should be sitting right here. Right there. Okay? And then you put the finger back down and pluck that right here. So it's an A minor chord except this note right here. When you get to that note, you're going to take that first finger off the guitar, and then you're going to add it back on. Now, what most people will ask, well, do I have to have the first finger down when I play the beginning of the song? No, you don't. If it's easier for you to leave that finger off the entire time until you get to this, that's perfectly fine. If it's easier for you to visualize it with your first finger down, and I know that might sound weird to some of you, but sometimes when you make a chord and you make it different than you normally make it, sometimes it weirds you out. So it's actually nice to make the chord the normal way. And then when you get to the part that's not normal, then you alter it. So it doesn't matter either way.
But just please remember, when you're looking at this video that I'm doing for you right now, these two notes are supposed to be on the second string. This one is C, and that one would be fine. This one's G, and that would be fine. And this one is D, and that would be fine. I don't know if you guys know this song or not, but I guess when I've always played it, I've always taken this two and this two and played them just going up this way, and this two and this zero and played them up this way, and these two zeros playing them up this way. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's maybe I just didn't listen to it that much, but that's how I did it. So that's my last point, really, is when you're learning how to read these chords or you're learning how to read this tablature, the most important thing that you can possibly, possibly do, all of you, is listen to the song. Okay, if there's a song that you want to learn how to play, you got to make sure that you've really given it a few thorough listens. Uh, again, not from a I'm singing along with the song perspective, but from what does the guitar really sound like it's actually doing. Now, we've already talked about when we play certain songs and you just strum along with those songs. Um, you know, the strumming pattern can change vastly, but like if you were playing the intro to Sweet Home Alabama or the intro to Who Will Save Your Soul here, they don't change that much. You know, you're going to pretty much do it the way that it is. The question is, is, is the way that th this tablature written correct or is it incorrect? And so what I have always done is, of course, I, I grew up in the time when you didn't have tablature and internet and that whole thing, but you listen to the song and you get it straight in your head. How does it sound in your head? Then you go to the tablature or the chords or whatever it is that you're trying to do and you make that make sense with what you hear. Don't allow somebody else's tablature, I mean, this is a perfect example right here, don't la allow somebody else's tablature um, to override what you had listened to in your head because then you'd be playing it wrong. And like, I'm always surprised that when people play things really horribly wrong and they don't realize that it doesn't sound anything like the song. So you want to get it straight in your head first and then go to the tab and then start making the tab make sense with what you hear. So again, needless to say, this is totally wrong. You know, it might have just been a typo, and that's fine. My question would be, is this two and this two right here, are those, is this correct, or should they be flipped? Should this two be here, and this two be here? So you play fifth string, fourth string, third string, and then you go up to the second string. That's how I've always played it. Now that I'm looking at this tab, I'm sort of second-guessing myself, so I'd have to go back and actually listen to the song and decide which way I think is the correct way. So guys, that's what I want you to start learning how to do is to get on this website and start looking for songs. You know, if you do like Taylor Swift, let's use that as an example. For all you Taylor Swift fans out there, okay, whatever this song is, I've never heard it before, but we are never ever getting back together, okay? 77 chords, five stars. Three, one star. I would avoid this one like the bubonic plague, okay? This one's 10. That's not bad. This one's 4, 15. I obviously would start with this one, right? I mean, just be logical when you're looking at them. Safe and sound. Here's another one. We have all these safe and sound sitting right here, but we have to come over here. Are we learning how to pick the notes, like with tab, or do we want to play the chords, right? And if we want to play the chords, obviously I would choose this one with 157 votes at five stars. That doesn't mean it's perfect, but it does mean it's probably more accurate than one that has eight at four stars. You know what I mean? If I was looking at the tab for it, well, then, needless to say, I would look at this one. Who knows? Maybe this one is better, but because I, you know, I mean, I'm just going to go with the averages here, and I'm going to choose which one seems like it would be the most accurate. If I really, really love the song, and I've given it a great thorough listen a few times, and I look at that tab, and there's still something not right about it, and I can't figure it out, then maybe I'll look at some of these other versions and use those to figure it out as well. So please, uh, you know, think about this a little bit. Obviously, when we get together on Friday, um, we'll be talking about this a bit more with the songs that you guys have chosen. Um, but what I'd like you to have done by then, if you haven't already, is I'd like you to take the song that you've talked about and look it up on this website. Okay? So that is your assignment, or I will give you an F. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, you're going to look up the song. It's hard to be funny over a microphone. Um, anyway, I'm going to have you look up the song the one you were talking about, and if you can, I want you to print it off, and I want you to bring it to class, and I want you to talk about it a little bit. Did the tab or the chords seem correct? Did they seem incorrect? What seemed right or wrong about it? And then as a class, we'll be playing it with my uh, awesome new little speaker thing that I brought last time. 
it wasn't burning and smoking. That was always good. So anyway, take care and I will talk to you on Friday.